Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on uh, how to build a scalable distributed multi-cloud API architecture on Kubernetes. So uh, thank you very much for joining this webinar today. So we'll be basically doing a recording of this webinar and we'll be sharing the slides uh, at the end of this uh, webinar. So you can maybe have a look at as well. So uh, let's begin. So uh, I'm Pubudu Gunatilika. I'm a technical lead at WSO2. And today, uh, Shehani will be joining for doing the demo with us. So we'll be doing a live demo on this, uh, how we build this uh, distributed architecture in Kubernetes. Uh, first things first, I think uh, you can uh, post your questions in the questions tab. So we can take these questions at the end of the Q, end of the Q and A session. Okay. Uh, the agenda for today. So we'll be looking at the centralized API management, and then we'll look at the cloud native API management, and then we we'll look at why Kubernetes, why people are going for Kubernetes, what's in it for when it's come to API management. And then we'll be looking at the deployment modes, and then we'll be discussing about the API operator for Kubernetes, and then we look at the uh, main feature that we are bringing today with API Manager 3.2.0, that's the latest uh, API Manager release that we'll uh, announce in a few days. And then, uh, so the this is about the private jet mode, which we have built for Kubernetes. So we'll be doing an introduction on that. And then we'll be doing a live demo on uh, how this feature works and how you deploy this on Kubernetes. And finally, we'll be having a Q&A session at the end. Okay, so let's uh, look at the uh, centralized uh, API management. So, um, if you look at today's uh, most of the enterprise systems, you will be having different different services running in your different servers. Uh, it could be a microservice, it could be an integration service, and then you want to apply API management for these services or the integration services or the microservices. Then you run an API gateway so that it enables security, it enables the throttling, and it enables mediation and do monitoring for your microservices or your integration services. And then the, these part of we call as the data plane, and then we have the API manager, which is the control plane. So in the API manager, we basically have this API publisher, developer, key manager, and traffic manager controlling these for the data plane. So if you take a typical system, this is how you basically deploy things, how you the central typical API management system looks like. So uh, with this approach, when we are now moving to the cloud native API management, what it brings is now we used to deploy things in virtual machines. And due to the limitations, we came from VMs to containers. So containers, if you take the, compare the VMs with the containers, the startup time, is less like uh, if you are to deploy a service in a container, it won't take that much of time right, uh, deploying in a VM, but in a container, it will take only the application startup time. So likewise, we come to the containers and then finally to manage and deploy application on containers, we bring the container orchestration systems. That's where the Kubernetes comes in. Now, if we deploy the same centralized API management architecture on, on to the Kubernetes, we'll be running the same set of services 
on different ports and your integration services on different port and your api gateway again a separate port and then probably the api manager the, or the control plane control part of it runs on a different uh, port so the idea is that you can basically bring this same thing what you have used to deploy in a vm to the containers or to in kubernetes and then you can do the same thing but the sense of like why people are moving to kubernetes basically to utilize the kubernetes ecosystem now so the points i have listed down here more focus towards the what you can get from kubernetes into the api management system now if you want to auto scale api gateways or backend services then you can use kubernetes so the you can scale your api gateways based on cpu memory or you even can use a custom matrices such as request per minute or it based on the error state you can still scale it so addition to that uh, you can utilize the kubernetes uh, ecosystem advantages like auto hiding for the application and uh, it is easy to deploy and manage your application and also for your api gateways specifically you can get the zero downtime rolling update so if you want to make a patch update or like or maybe you do the one updating then basically with the zero downtime you can roll out your deployment so you will be having like a blueprint deployment so that the traffic that comes to the all environment will be routed to the uh, newly created environment then also you can do the canary deployment so in a canary deployment you can increase the uh, traffic that comes to the new in new newer environment in an incremental manner so in with that way you can make sure that your newly deployed api or your uh, api gateways are running without any error so also you can build a story where you have an end-to-end -end fully automation capability so these are the some of the things that you will gain when you are moving to the Kubernetes environment from a virtual machine based deployment. Now, if you look at the an overview of an API gateway, which we are having now. Now, if you take the API gateway, you will be deploying set of APIs. It could be maybe you are deploying 20 APIs, maybe hundreds or maybe thousands of APIs. So, uh, in this case, we have SMS API, Payment API, Store API, and Food API. But if you cons if you consider the concerns in these cases, these APIs may have a different resource usages. For an example, the Payment API gateway needs more resources than the SMS API. Maybe SMS API api and sm uh, food api needs different security enforcement and some api may need dynamic routing and also some apis need to have a complex mediation and transformation logic to be done so if you are running a, that mediation logic for one particular api that affects the, all the apis that are deployed in one API gateway. So some other example is like you are looking for API shaping in the sense you may have consumers where desktop users need to get the full payment, full uh, payload while your mobile users need to get the half of the payload because to uh, restrict the, like the utilize the bandwidth usage in mobile users so some of the other examples are like response caching and also way of having private and public api so there can be cases like 
some APIs need to be exposed to a set of people while to expose uh, some APIs to the public uh, or to the external uh, users. And also like uh, there can be cases like you deploy an API gateway per department. So for example, engineering department may need uh, another set of uh, API gateway and while uh, marketing team needs another set of API gateway for their uh, load to handle. So in that case, how you can utilize this central gateway. So if we are to go with the centralized gateway, you will have to maybe, you will have to duplicate everything. So in that case, the solution is to deploy these APIs in a decentralized manner. Now, for an example, in the case which we taken earlier, store API can be deployed separately and payment API can be deployed separately and you can maybe group set of APIs and deploy those separately. So the, with this approach, you have this beneficial like decentralizing and able to scale based on the load without affecting each other. So this is the main advantage you are getting by decentralizing your APIs into different different API gateways. Now the question comes in what we have today, the, what gateway we have today, can we go with this API gateway? If we take the API today we have, maybe it takes a, a higher startup time or it may consume a lot of uh, um, memory usage. The key thing is that the existing gateways are not cloud native. In that case, we need to go for a API micro gateway specifically as the micro gateway is a lightweight version of the API gateway specifically designed for the microservices architecture. Now, earlier the default gateway or the this particular gateway centralized gateway which we are using today the startup time is higher but if you consider with the micro gateway it has a one second of startup time while it has self-validating tokens localized rate limiting offline analytics and immutable and stateless so these are the key characteristics in if we consider the micro gateway and it also has the support for life cycle management across environment. Other key aspect is that it has the low resource environment. So if you take the distribution, it's around 40 MB size and the Docker images are less. So it's more cloud native friendly and it can use to deploy uh, in a Kubernetes environment. So it has also the memory is less than 250 MB and one core of CPU will be useful. So these are the set of characteristics that we are looking in, looking at the micro gateway. So uh, now if we are moving to the cloud native API architecture, what we can see here is that how we deploy the same set of things in a cloud native API architecture. So now, if you consider the this, uh, this has three layers, basically, data plane, control plane, and the management plane. And if we start from the management plane, you have the API publisher, that's where the API developers or the publishers come and create their APIs. And then once they publish, an API, it will be available in the developer portal. So the API de developer that comes in or the application developer comes in and uh, basically discover the APIs and uh, subscribe to particular uh, APIs. And then the business users basically uh, get the business information of the analytics 
via the uh, API analytics. So that's about the management plane. And in the control plane, you have the traffic manager and the key manager. Traffic manager basically does the traffic management while the key manager issue tokens and validate tokens. And the data plane, we have these set of micro gateways that we can deploy. So earlier in the centralized API management architecture, what we, we what we are having is a one single micro gate, one single API gateway to handle all the traffic. But if you take the cloud native API architecture, what we'll be having is set of micro gateways. It could be uh, five micro gateways, or it could be 10, or it could be maybe 40, 50. So based on the use case, you can decide the number of micro gateways you want to use. So we'll be discussing on this uh, data plane separately. So the API consumer basically come via the ingress gateway to respective API micro gateway. So with this approach, basically they can consume whatever the APIs that are available in any of these micro gateways. So let's look at the multi-cloud API management architecture, how the how we can do this in a multi-cloud environment. Now, if we consider this, it's not mandatory to deploy everything in Kubernetes. While you run the data plane in Kubernetes, you can deploy the control plane and the management plane in VMs. So the IaaS providers, uh, so the infrastructure providers basically have their Kubernetes uh, services in AWS, GKE, Azure, so the like. So you base, based on the cloud environment you have, you can decide which uh, flavor you want to go, then you can have the data plane there. And then VMs, you can deploy the other existing component. So the idea is that from this control plane, not just one single data plane, you can control the other like two or maybe more than two data planes at the same time. So the, it's, it's just a matter of configuring to the data plane from the control plane, how many data planes it need to control. So the, with this approach, uh, you can basically scale your API architecture so that uh, to handle the hybrid cloud environment like you can run a kubernetes cluster in on-prem while you run another set of cluster in cloud it could be gk aws or anything so this will match with the hybrid cloud while you are trying to achieve the multi-cloud approach so if you look at the data plane now the this is the data plane basically consists of uh, API micro gateways plus microservices. So when the API consumer comes via the ingress gateway, so the ingress gateway, it has some mappings uh, based on the context of the API. So let's assume you have one API in the first micro gateway has two API, then the ingress gateway has the context for all four v1 so the request comes in it will go to the first micro gateway and if the second micro gateway has the bar uh, api the request when the request comes to the ingress gateway that request will go to the bar micro gateway based on the context uh, that we have defined in the ingress gateway so the, this is how we can basically switch traffic to different micro gateways from the English gateway. Okay, so let's uh, look at the deployment modes in this uh, scenario. So there are a couple of uh, deployment modes available. Uh, first thing is about the private jet mode. So in this private jet mode, what you are basically having is uh, uh, one pod 
that contains the API micro gateway container and then you have uh, another pod in Kubernetes where you have the, the backend microservices running so in Kubernetes the pod concept comes in where the pod can have one or more containers so in in this private jet mode this pod has one container in each of the pods so the idea is that you can scale your micro gateway separately while you scale your microservice separately in here you will get an dedicated api micro gateway for the api as well so this is about how you deploy your apis in a private jet mode and the second mode is about the sidecar mode so this is uh, something uh, uh, very firm, famous in a service mesh approach where like this one single pod contains multiple containers one container is the micro gateway container other container is the microservice container so the idea is that uh, let's assume you want to make a um, drop the network call from micro gateway container to the uh, backend service then you can use this sidecar approach because it has one single port has a one layer of network so the network layer is shared among these containers so the request will go via local host so that's one key advantage and the other advantage in here is that when you scale let's assume you want to scale the backend service along with the api micro gateway then if you use this approach when you scale the pod it will basically scaling the micro gateway along with the microservice container so this is again um, you will get a dedicated api micro gateway for the api now the third approach is about having the shared mode so the shared mode is more focusing on the centralized api management which we are used to have now like you have two or more apis in a one single api micro gateway and the backend services could be running in different ports so the idea here is that you deploy multiple apis in one particular micro gateway so uh, with this you can group your apis based on maybe you can have a uh, group apis based on the functionality or maybe you can group based on the region so likewise you can scale your uh, shared mode micro gateways using kubernetes okay let's look at the api operator for kubernetes so uh, this is uh, about the operator that uh, kubernetes has this extension model which we can basically come up with the custom resource definition now if anyone who has who is familiar with kubernetes knows that if you want to deploy something in kubernetes you basically have to come up with the deployment or service yaml files to deploy that in kubernetes so similar to the these resources you can come up with your own definition so that's where we bring this uh, api definition where you can deploy in kubernetes so let's assume you have a couple of microservices that are deployed in kubernetes and then you want to expose these microservices as an api then what you do is you create a saga definition you can generate a saga definition or you can write a saga definition and then you give that saga definition to kubernetes so once you give that saga definition it will basically deploy an api micro gateway in kubernetes so that it will basically apply security rate limiting monitoring and mediation for the microservices so this makes api first class citizen in uh, kubernetes ecosystem 
it's uh, easier to deploy and then uh, it has some uh, building deployment patterns so these patterns the patterns that i explained earlier you can either deploy in private jet or shared or maybe in uh, sidecar mode and this whole this also has this uh, fully automated experience for cloud native api management and the saga definition being comes as the single source of truth in this approach so that's the overall uh, how the api operator looks like and uh, if you look at the workflow of this operator so uh, to deploy an api in kubernetes you can use the command line tool so the api ctl is a command line tool that you can use to interact with the api manager and also with kubernetes now if you give the subway definition we are the api ctl using api ctl at the api command it will deploy an api in kubernetes so the api operator take that api custom resource technician and it will do two things for the given saga definition it will basically take that saga definition and at some uh, uh, security and at some uh, mediation and build a docker image and push to the docker registry and once it is completed it will create the deployment service and hpa hpa is the horizontal pod auto scaling policy in kubernetes so once you deploy this deployment service basically you will be getting a micro gateway container up and running for your microservices so that's the overview what you will see when you deploy when you give a saga definition to kubernetes to deploy an api for a given microservices okay so let's go to the private jet mode for kubernetes on uh, so this is the main focus uh, to for today's uh, webinar so i think uh, it's more clear what private jet mode is now we have done an integration with api manager and kubernetes so basically you can create an api in api manager and then you can deploy that api in kubernetes environment so once you deploy that it will create a dedicated api micro gateway for the api you created so if you consider this with the centralized approach what what you used to do is when you deploy when you create an app api and then you deploy in api manager it in the central api gateway you will be deploying that particular api so if you create 10 apis those 10 apis will be deployed in the same uh, central api gateway but in this approach you will be having a one micro gateway in a like a private jet for your api so this has a single control plane to govern the data plane so this uh, micro gateway is exposed via the ingress gateway on kubernetes so that you can access it now the prerequisite comes in you need to install a kubernetes cluster and then you install the api operator on kubernetes and then uh, you basically you can enable uh, uh, ingress mode in operator then uh, you can you you can uh, run uh, api manager on kubernetes or maybe on vm so the only requirement is that your kubernetes your api manager should be able to access it from basically it needs to access the kubernetes cluster that you are running so with this i think uh, if you go to the workflow uh, you will first create an api using the api publisher and then you publish the 
API. So when publishing, you select the Kubernetes environment and then publish the API. And uh, once you publish the API, API manager talks to the Kubernetes and deploy the API in Kubernetes. So what will happen is it will uh, deploy a micro gateway for the API. It will create a deployment service and HPA. HPA is the Olson report auto scaling for the micro gateway. And this task will be done by the API operator. And finally, you can access the API from the ingress gateway, or you can use the developer portal so that uh, uh, the developers who come to the developer portal, app developers basically can uh, access the API from the developer portal while generating an access token in the developer portal. So this is the straightforward workflow that we'll have to follow to um, uh, test this feature out. So uh, I think then we can move to the demo. So let me hand over to Shehani so that uh, we can start with the demo. Okay. Uh now we are going to try out and see how we can deploy an api in a kubernetes cluster in private chat mode from the api manager so first let's see the things that we need for it first we need to have a kubernetes cluster here we are using a gke cluster and we need to deploy api operator in that kubernetes cluster and also we need to set up ingress mode in the api operator so when we deploy an api it will expose to the traffic through the ingress so finally we need to deploy the api manager uh, for this demonstration, we have deployed the API manager in Kubernetes cluster, but it's not mandatory. We can deploy API manager in VMs as well, but in that case, we should ensure that we have the access to our Kubernetes cluster from the API manager. So we have already deployed the API operator and the API manager in the Kubernetes cluster. If we reach the ports in the namespace WSO2 system, So you can see API operator is running and we have deployed API manager in the namespace WSO2. And if you list the port in that namespace, you can see all in one API manager is running in the namespace WSO2. So now let's see what are the configurations that we need to add in order to enable this feature in the API manager. So this is the configuration uh, config map that we have deployed which contain the configuration of the deployment normal file so here in order to enable this feature we have added the configuration of our kubernetes cluster uh, under the key container management cluster config here we have defined the type as kubernetes and we can give a cluster name and also we can give a display name which we're going to display on the api manager publisher environment tab and also we can define the minimum number of replicas we need and the ingress access url and the namespace that we decide to deploy our api so this is the minimum configurations that we need to uh, include in order to enable this feature. And since we have deployed the API manager in the Kubernetes cluster, here we do not need to configure the cluster's master URL and the service account token in the deployment, deployment terminal. So we just need to create the service account in the desired namespace and specify that in the API manager controller configuration. But if you're going to deploy the API manager in VMs, in that case, we need to define the cluster's master URL and the service account token in the configurations. So this is all we need in order to enable this feature. Let's go and create an API and deploy it in the Kubernetes cluster. So 
So first, I'm going to deploy a microservice in our Kubernetes cluster in our namespace WSO2, which I'm going to use as the backend of our API. So we have a microservice called Kedap. So this will list down the set of products. So if we list down the ports, So if we list down the prod, you can see the deployment is creating. Okay, uh, now we can go to the API manager and create an API. So let's create a new API. For the endpoint, we are going to use the microservice that we just deployed. So if we list down the services, you can see our microservice is exposed with the product name. So we are going to use this as our backend. Let's add some business plans as well. Okay, now let's create the API. Okay, to this microservice, we are exposing two resources. One is products, which lists down all the available products, and the other resource is the products, which uh, retrieve based on their ID. So let's add these resources as well. Let's go to the resources tab. Okay, let's say this. Okay, let's go to the environments tab. Here you can see our Synapse gateways, production and sandbox on the API gateways at the first. And then we have the gateway labels, which is for micro gateways. And and then we have the Kubernetes environment at last. So let's select the Kubernetes cluster that we have configured and let's save this as well. Okay, now we are ready to publish the API. Let's go to the lifecycle tab and let's publish the API. Okay, let's go to the group CTA command line to see our API. Here you can see for the, the API online store is created. If we list down the ports, you can see the Kaniko job for our API online store is up and run. So while our deployment is getting ready, let's go back to the slides to see what actually happens in this process. So if we go back to the API operator overview, here instead of API CTL, we are using API manager and we have created an API and selected our environment as the Kubernetes cluster, and then we publish the API. 
So since we are having Kubernetes integration, when we publish the API, the API definition deployed in the Kubernetes through the Kubernetes APIs. So once the API definition deployed, the API operator will deploy a micro gateway for that API definition. So it will build the image using Conico and push it to the registry that we have given when we install API operator. Here we are using GCI. So after successful completion of the Conico job, the API operator then will create the deployment service and the HPA for the micro gateway. Here, the HPA is the horizontal port of the scaling policy, which will scale the micro gateway based on the CPU. So this is the process that is happening when we deploy an API to Kubernetes cluster from the API manager. So let's go back to the kubectl command line to see whether our deployment is ready or not. Okay. So as you can see here, the Conico job is completed and the ports are running for our API online store. Now we can go back to the API manager developer portal and we can access the, this API through the developer portal. So let's go back to the API manager. Okay, since now we have deployed our API online store, you can see that in the developer portal. Okay, first let's create an application. Let's create an application called JWT. Okay, let's go to the APIs. Let's subscribe to our application that we have created and let's generate the access token as well. Okay, now we'll go to the tryout editor. Here, the application is JWT that we have subscribed. And as the gateway, we have here the Kubernetes cluster that we have configured. And let's give the access token here. So let's try to execute this resource. Here you can see we are getting the response as the list of products available. Uh, let's execute the other resource as well. This will retrieve the product based on its ID. We'll give an ID 101. Okay, here you can see we are getting the details of the products. We are the ID is 101. So this is the all about the feature. 
And in this manner, we can deploy micro gateways in private jet mode for the other APIs as well. And that will deploy dedicated micro gateway for each API. So that is the end of the demonstration. And I hand over to the Kubuntu for the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Shahani. I think we can go to the slides. Uh, I think we can take the questions now. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can uh, type these, uh, your questions in the questions tab. So let me answer some of the questions that are uh, available here. So is, one question is about, is there a way to deploy multiple APIs in Kubernetes? Yeah, so this feature at the moment, we only support uh, private jet, uh, like one single API from the API manager, but in uh, API operator, you can combine two Saga definition and then deploy uh, multiple APIs in Kubernetes. So that when you deploy that, you will be getting a one micro gateway that has uh, uh, multiple API definitions running so uh, second question is uh, how do we enable this feature in tenant flow yes so now uh, when enabling it for super tenant we basically use the deployment uh, thermal but for tenant you can go to the tenant con and add your kubernetes uh, cluster details there so for tenancy like uh, uh, it can connect to their own Kubernetes cluster by giving the tenancy details, uh, Kubernetes cluster details in the tenant con. Uh, is there a way to customize the implementation? Is uh, uh, yeah, we provide the in interface so that you can extend it and write your own implementation. So this feature will uh, basically we are enhancing this feature to in the future so that uh, you will be seeing what are the ports that you have deployed and you will get more flexibility uh, on um, the like the more overview of what you have deployed and probably you can get more govern on what you have deployed you can increase the number of ports likewise uh, we are working on uh, improving this feature the next question is is there a way to check the progress of the deployment status via api yeah so for the moment it's not available but it will be there in the future uh, what are the other configuration that we need we should add if uh, we deploy apm in vm so so now what shehani showcases is uh, deploying api manager in kubernetes so the API manager was running on Kubernetes that you don't need to do anything uh, additionally. Uh, but in if you are running in a VM, we need to create a service account, then get a basically it will give an access token. So you need to give that access token in the deployment uh, uh, terminal file. Yeah. Next question is, can we deploy the same? API in Kubernetes and Synapse API at the same time. Yes, uh, we can do that. Uh, in the environment section, you can basically click on uh, the Synapse environment and the Kubernetes environment so that uh, it will be deployed in both uh, cases. And uh, is it mandatory to have the ingress mode in the API operator? Or can we do the same in other mode? Yeah, you can. So there are a couple of modes like the ingress is uh, one of the mode and there are modes like the load balancer type that's a, basically the default mode so you'll be getting a one single endpoint for each of the api gateway that you deploy but i think the more suitable environment option is the ingress mode so that you will get a one host name for entire deployment so if you are running uh, 10 gateways, but you will be having a single endpoint so that your consumers can use that single endpoint. But if you want to use multiple, then you have the other options as well. 
so uh, yeah so the next question is uh, can we deploy api products in kubernetes in the same manner so uh, api products uh, we don't stop uh, support at the moment but uh, in the future we are planning to bring that support for api products as well and uh, so the, i think the last question is about will you be sharing the webinar videos yeah we'll be sharing this uh, webinar video along with the uh, slides uh, at the uh, end of this session so if you uh, if you have any question also you can uh, write to us you can email us uh, so those details are available in the slides as well so uh, I think that's about I think uh, the questions we have got. So yeah, I think we can uh, end today's webinar. So thank you very much for joining. So once we end this session, you will get a form. You will uh, get a feedback form to fill out. So uh, we appreciate your feedback. So yeah, uh, if you can fill that in uh, like few taking few seconds then uh, we we are thankful for that so that's about it then thank you for joining stay safe okay bye